What's up guys? Uh, Cam and Guy here. What's up? We're discussing UFC 249's uh, fight card. Who going to go through some predictions, look at some odds on betway.ca.za and see if we agree with the odds and who we think is going to win. Maybe you can make some cash with our predictions. But also don't hate us if you get it wrong <coughs> because it's still just a fight. Yeah. Anyone's in with the punches chant. Okay, I think we're going to start from the prelims and work our way up um, like we should. Yeah, okay. you've got a little leak here, my friend. Yeah, over the... Over the handle, yeah. Yeah, that's what I put okay. underneath the whole time. No problem. Um, First fight on the e- early prelims, we've got Ryan Spann versus Sam Alvey. Both of them have, like, almost... Well, Sam Alvey's got way over 30 fights. He's got 33 wins. Ryan Spann's like 15 or 18 and something. Yeah, so R- Ryan Spann's been around for long. Um, he's, he's tough, he's not the most skillful, but he's, he's a gamer, you know, and uh, I've seen him fight some guys and beat guys he shouldn't have. Um, so yeah, I, I don't count him out at all. Um, I'm not too clued up on the guy he's fighting. I've just seen one or two clips. Um, I do know he trains at Uriah Hall, so obviously he can deal with some good striking. Um, but yeah, I'm going with with Span, eh? I'm I'm in agreement. Ryan Span's my favorite in this. I know him and uh, your rival have been training really hard um, in their little isolation chamber of the gym. Yeah. Um, but it's more. It's not that I still know so much about Ryan Span, but it's just that Sam Alvey's style is very slow, very plodding. He's not really gonna knock you out. Maybe through attrition, but. I think he's on a three fight losing skid at the moment, so I don't know. And they're fighting at light heavyweight, which I think, I don't know about Ryan, but Sam, I think he used to fight middle. Yeah. So, I like, I just don't see how Sam wins this other than through a weird attrition issue. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sweet. Cool. Moving on. Bryce Mitchell. What's his, what's his fight name? Thug Nasty. Thug Nasty. I'm, I'm going with Thug Nasty. And Charles um, Rosa. I'm hoping that he has a pair of camo Reebok shorts by now. He's been asking Reebok for a while. Well, not asking, telling. Um, yeah, dude, it's, it's so weird. He's like a proper redneck, but his jiu-jitsu's on point, and he's just down to fight, you know? He's, like, he's not one of those guys trying to outpoint you. He's trying to finish you. He's the dude who got the second twister. Yeah. yeah. Fucking dope. And then Charles Rosa, I, I don't know too much, but I know he's been out of action for like almost two years. As well, which yeah, is but never a good thing. The, the UFC gives the call, you say, Ooh, yes, sir. I know, unless your name is like Dominic Cruz, yeah, where you get better every time. But yeah, that's also true. Um, everyone always plays on the whole ring rust, but he comes back from being off two to three years and yeah. having multiple surgeries, and then he, he yeah. regains a title. So, yeah. uh, um, Cruz is my man, dude. So, even if you don't like his style, we'll get there, though. Okay, we'll get there. So, we'll get there. But like, um, just odds on that fight, Bryce Mitchell is quite the heavy favorite. We agree with the odds. It seems like a pretty safe bet. Yeah. Okay, now to the normal prelims. Uh, Vicente Luque versus Nico Price. Both of these guys have like, I mean, together I think they have like 10 performance bonuses or fight of the night awards. Nico Price is the dude who knocks you out of his back while you're trying that's, to fight that's, that's pretty much what I know about him. I've seen him knock guys out with up kicks off his back. Crazy. Always, always just weird and crazy things. Mm. Vicente Luque is way definitely technically way better. Although, and we know he's tough after his fight against Thompson. Where he took it to him and that was basically a contender fight for Luque from what I understand. Yeah, that man. was supposed to be his like, coming out party. So hopefully he keeps the ball rolling, yeah, and uh, gets onto it, and this isn't a, a speed bump for him. Yeah. Uh, just watch out when you're talking, not to talk into your cup. Or your hand. <laughs> so. <laughs> All good. Um, moving on to the, I think it's the only woman's fight on the card. Uh, Carla Esperanza versus Michelle Waterson, the karate hardy. Yeah, I'm going with Waterson. Um, Esperanza is good, but like she's the cookie monster. She, uh, Joanna exposed the ugly man. When Johanna took the title from her, um, I think Johanna beat her head in and she didn't like the pressure and all of that. So I think uh, Waterson's got much better striking um, and she'll probably put too much pressure and then Esparza's going to try desperation shots and just gas herself. 
So, interesting thing here is that Esperanza is actually the favorite. Um, if I look at the odds, we're looking at 1.59 for Esperanza and 2.12 for Waterson. And maybe that's because she just came off that last two. Did she lose to? Was it Joanna as well? Waterson. I think it was Joanna. Was, no, it wasn't Joanna. It was... Dude, we should... Ooh, hold up one sec, guys. I need to check this for you quickly. Didn't she beat Joanna? No. No, no, no. <laughs> I think that was her last fight. That was like a contendership or a title fight. Um, you uh, karate hardy. Let's just check the little show dogs for extra stats quickly. Uh, yeah, it was Joanna. Yeah, that was she, a number one contender. She fight. beat her. No, she Joanna won like convincingly five rounds, like very convincingly. Mm. Not that it was it wasn't like I wouldn't say an outclassing, but. It wasn't Different close. Styles, it yeah. wasn't close. Um, but I just don't see Esperanza's wrestling being that phenomenally good enough to deal with Michelle. No. Nah. I think she's going to pick her apart from the outside and wear her down much the same like Joanna did to Esperanza. I think so. I hope so. I like her. She's sexy. <laughs> <laughs> so on that, there's a good bet to make, guys. Um, Michelle Waterson being the underdog means... The odds are pretty much in your favor. Don't mind Cam and his bonghile. <laughs> um, yeah, so I put, we're putting our money on Watterson. Okay, moving on. Heavyweights. Ale- Alexi Olenek versus Fabricio Vadum. I'm going to go with Vadum. The other dude does all those crazy Ezekiels from everywhere, but I think Vadum's like smart enough not to be there, you know, and, be able to deal with it like I know guys trying to Ezekiel me I'm like lack of ball try your luck somewhere else and it's not gonna happen yeah this is kind of like the UFC like masters division <laughs> masters level 3 dude do you know I, I don't even think for Doom's ranked anymore no because he hasn't fought since he lost the title I think that's wild eh? yeah I think I think it was the title or something it's been a while since he's actually fought so there is always that like ring rust issue but I don't know, I think he's been at it for so long. I don't know, at that level, I don't think ring rust is too much of a thing, you know? Like, just, for him, I think he's just so casual about it. Like, he's, the amount of experience he has. It's crazy how um, Cruz can be out for like three years and everyone's still talking about him and he's relevant. Vadum lost, you said he lost on the title. I think it was his title fight, his sure. last fight was a title fight, I'd have to check. <laughs> and I, was, but, I actually completely forgot about him up until I saw him advertised on But the he's card. also the dude that beat the emperor. Yeah, the last emperor. I understand this. And he also, uh, yeah man, he dollar though. Vai Cavallo. And he fucking what jump knee Kane Velasquez to defend mm-hmm. the, t- to unify the title or something. No, okay, so he's, okay, he's actually fought quite a lot since he, his He lost title. to Stipe. He lost to Stipe, he beat Travis Brown, he lost to Alistair Overeem by decision, submitted Walt Harris, st- uh, beat Marcin Tibera by decision, and then lost to Ale- Alexander Volkov by a KO yeah, that, in the fourth so. round. So the other thing is, I remember Olenek's last fight that I remember was in Russia, and he, like, even though he won the, with another, like, Anaconda or something, but he he looked really exhausted. Whereas for Dooms, he takes you know, his, his, his conditioning quite seriously. Like, remember that Valeska's fight? Yeah. Like, he, was, he was there for two months to, like, prepare. I think he, heavyweights, like, fucking hit and miss sometimes, man. Like, either mm. either they come in and they're in shape or they're just, like, big and slow. Yeah. I can either be, like, a, a war, it's going to be, like, 10 seconds of God throwing hands and then the other guy's like, well, give me a second, bro. <laughs> I okay. fucking hate it. I, mean, I, I don't like the heavier weights. Yeah. I mean, odds-wise, Fabricio is way ahead. Um, you're tripling up on Alexei Olenek. I like to call him the ox. There's something about him that's very ox-like. Yeah, he's a strange-looking fellow. Um, so, we're both going for Doom. Cool. Yeah. There's your favourite, the former champ. Woo! Well, then, what, the the headline of the prelim fights, although I think it might move up now after Jacare. Jacare's been withdrawn. Dude, how hectic is it that he's contracted COVID? It's like, we all like, oh, fuck, the fight's him, not going on, but he's fucking... Him and his two cornermen. That's so heavy. The biggest thing is when you watch the face-off, they're like, he fist-bumped with Dana, and I then know, two, two seconds that. later, Dana fist-pumped with Uriah Hall. I'm like, guys, come on, that defeats the entire point of this. Yeah. But also I saw Jacare's two cornermen are oh, tested positive now as well. That's so heavy, man. 
Um, Fuck. But I guess they're lucky they contracted to the UFC. The UFC take care of their people, though. Yeah. Fuck. I see these guys complaining sometimes about pay, and I can understand that. But fuck, dude. Those lives have been changed, though. Cool. Okay, moving on to one of the mega fights that we're all ex- super excited for. Anthony Pettis, former champ, versus Donald Cowboy Cerrone. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm on the fence with this one. I want to go with Cowboy, but just like, think of the Connor fight now. He, he always talks about he wasn't there, and often he doesn't show up, you know. Like, guys he's not supposed to beat, he somehow beats, like, Matt Brown, for example. He beat the shit out of Matt Brown. I thought Matt Brown was going to punish him. And then guys he's supposed to smash, he loses to. And I'm like, fuck. So either he's winning or he's getting owned. There's no middle ground with him. But still, fuck, he's a cowboy. Let's go with Donald. Well, I'm just looking to find where he actually fought Pettis. It's like seven years ago or something <laughs> silly. Not that long. <laughs> Come on. Where was this? Okay, he lost to Anthony Pettis. Kick to the body. Yeah. UFC on Fox 6. Do- Johnson vs. Dodson. One. Oh, wow. Johnson vs. Dodson won. Not even the second. Dude, that's, that's how far back we go. We're talking 2013. So that's, that's seven years ago. You were right. Yes, um, man. Wow. Quick math. Quick math. <laughs> so, look, they're both been through a bunch of hella wars yeah um they both got fucked up in their last fights although i mean pettis vs diaz was a lot of fun and then pettis vs ferguson he was actually winning until he broke his hand yeah i think pettis has changed is not like all this flash he's still got the flash but he's trying to fight guys now like he's trying to be a little bit crazy and i think sometimes that plays to his advantage the only thing with him is his gas tank it says Cowboy's gym is BMF Ranch. Yeah. It's that is motherfucker ranch. It is, is that what it's called? Yeah. That's, that's why I like, I'm like, fuck that title, man. That's such a piece of shit. It's like, <laughs> just get the O of fucking certificate and say, yeah, you, you <laughs> fucking hardcore, but don't make a belt, man. Controversial opinion, guys. Fuck that. <laughs> yeah. That's fucking funny. Yeah, man. So, I mean, Pettis is a strong favorite, 1.61. Uh, Cerrone 2.09 who are you going with? I'm going Cerrone really? I'm, yeah. I'm going with Pettis risk um, it for the biscuit there I don't know up to you I, guys I haven't enjoyed Pettis much truthfully I've, I've had an agenda with Pettis since he beat Henderson I used to love Benson Henderson and when he fucking quack quack kicked him off the cage there I was like ah bastard Ooh. and then when he armbarred armbarred him in the title defense my heart sank a little bit there. Okay, moving on, guys. Main card time. Greg, the wife beater Hardy, versus Jorgen de Castro. Will Jorgen give us the vengeance that all MMA fans want? I really don't give a fuck about this fight, truthfully. Like, to me, I'm looking at this, I'm like, fuck, that's when I'm going to go make something in the kitchen. It's, it's, like, too, it's too okay heavyweights. Dude, it's, it's boring, man. It's like a street fight. With Reebok shorts on and no, UFC no, no, no. gloves. Yeah. Jorgen's got some cool shit. He's like uh, like Mighty Mo in K1. Like he's a small heavyweight. He's been knocking the fuck out of people from what I've been reading. Let me just give yeah, you a little so insight. I know he's undefeated. Every fat guy in Boxburg. Basically. <laughs> Jorgen De Castro. I mean, the odds are quite heavily favored to Greg Hardy. For those that don't know, Greg Hardy is a former... He's the guy with the inhaler. Yeah. He's a former NFL player. He was, I don't know if he was fired from NFL for it, but he's got um, like wife beating charges. I'm forgetting the exact term. Yeah, he's a boost. <laughs> Basically. Uh, I mean, this dude's sick. Jorgen's 6 and 0. One fight in with leg kicks KO. TKO. Like, he, he bangs, you know? Um, I mean, they all kind of do. There's that. <laughs> Uh, one fight in the UFC, Whitaker vs. Adesanya, and then one in Dana White's Contender Series Season 3. So that was actually quite recently. That was 2019. Um, all finished. Oh, he's got one decision. He's from Cape Verde. He's only 6 foot 1 for a heavyweight that's quite small wow, in the I'm, UFC. But I'm 5'11". 
But yeah, yeah from what that. like I've been reading, his like his Monster leg kicks and he's, he's super powerful KO wise. Um, Dude, and I just really don't like Greg Hardy. Yeah, he's just the cucker. Fuck it. Just yeah. So there's another potential money making bet. Jorgen De Castro to get those. What do you call it? The accumulators going, the multi bets to earn you big money. Anything else to add? Cool. Moving on, Jeremy yes, Stevens man. versus Calvin Qatar. Both savages, but Stevens, fucking dude, that oaks a ninja. And he can take. Uh, that's why when Aldo dropped him to the body, I was like, wow. So, hold on. You, I mean, you said Jeremy. He's actually a training partner of Cruz. Yeah. So they've probably been training quite a lot together. Yeah. Working, not that they're the best sparring partners for these matches, style-wise. Hey, man. So Udo's an aggressor as well. He, he's, and he likes to clinch. Jeremy Stevens likes to come forward. So if you have an aggressive guy coming at you, Fair. that's good for Cruz, man. Yeah. Look, some training partner is better than no training partner. 100%. So, can't really and like, truthfully think of who Esohudo had to sorry for getting yeah, your no, mimic uh, Cruz in his camp you know yeah, yeah. he's got the dude with the white glasses yeah that's it he's really watching the yeah, yeah this is everything coach so yeah he's like brother is his wrestling Strange, coach yeah. his MMA coach hey it's working man the guys in one or two other guys corners they're all doing well yeah clearly he has some comprehension of what's going on no for sure man um so just techni- technical basis you know Jeremy Stevens very much uh, die by the sword kind of guy like he's either knocking you out or getting carried on his shield back home yeah um, whereas Calvin Qatar is a little bit like he's also a brawler but he's a, he's a bit more technical yeah he's cool man but I'm also being a bit biased yeah I dig uh, I dig little heathen fair um, so you, you think I mean Jeremy I'm going I mean, Jeremy Jeremy's, I mean, And he always shows up dude. Look his odds are 2.94 So like It, it feels like a, There's a good swing bet there to, to get your odds quite high I'm personally going with Calvin Qatar I think Second end, Towards the end of the second Third round Where he's gonna Start picking him off And Get a TKO Or something like that yeah, maybe, but I think Stevens just I can put the pressure and puts him on his ass. Eh? But it's going to be a super fun fight regardless, just because of who it is. And it is. Oof. Now, potential craziest heavyweight fight of all time, yet chances are it's actually going to be a boring stinker. Uh, we got Francis the Predator Naganu from Cameroon and Josinho Rosenstrike from... Man, I can never remember the name of the country. It's all the, like half of the Dutch kickboxers all come from there. Suriname, that's it. Oh, wow. What's Suriname, yeah. They, I don't know what the political thing is, but there's a hell of a lot of that top-end kickboxers that live in Holland and fight in glory and all of that. But they're all from Suriname, that's which is in South America. I really was yeah, like... That's what, no, that's why I'm like, it's, it's a weird thing, but they all go over there. Like, I know there's a lot of Moroccans in Holland, but that's close. Uh, so... Geography 101. Interesting yeah. side piece of information. Um, I'm going to say Ngano off the bat. Eh? <laughs> He's just, like, they fought a lot of similar guys, but the way they finished the guys are completely different, you know? Like, this guy's claim to fame is that he split Alistair over his lip, you know? Like, and Ngano uppercutted him into a coffin, so I'm going Ngano. Too. A you can still fight with a split lip when you're dead, you're dead, bro. <laughs> um... Ooh, I mean, I'm also going with Magano, partly just because I really like him. You just got to look. Jozinho is uh, Jar. I can't even pronounce it properly, but he is technically better from a kick. Like, he's got more experience. I don't know. Like, all of Magano's fights is his MMA record, whereas jozinho has got that, like, 100 kickboxing, high-level kickboxing fights. That's true. Um, he, he knocks a lot of the guys out on the back foot. Uh, like, he, yeah. he's getting pressured and he pop up. And, What's, what's interesting is just the style of the knockouts. Like, Nagano is, let me hit you hard every time. Yeah. Whereas Jozinho, it's, it's kind of like slaps almost like sometimes. Like Nate Diaz, Nate Diaz. But, like, but it, it knocks them out. Like, it doesn't look that... You know what I mean? It doesn't have that, like... I understand like, what you're saying. ...justness to it. I, I don't but know. But it still does the damage, which is what's actually really scary and misleading. Yeah. I'm just going by my understanding of how it's gone so far purely right. through watching fights and I'm going and gone wouldn't it be funny Nagano just like lay in prison 
like he, he uh, walks sure. right straight to the fence, shoots a single double, or whatever, gets him down, and then just sits in his guard and throws hammer fist. Yeah, down. then then he becomes a new Greg Hardy to me. <laughs> then then I say we go to kitchen and you fight. <laughs> but whoever wins this fight is almost definitely getting the next title shot at heavyweight, provided Stipe uh, DC thing gets sorted out because Stipe is out there on the front line doing his COVID nineteen. Stuff. Yeah, they take to go. Yeah. They don't, he's like a man's man. Eh? Like, he doesn't. He doesn't get enough props as the champion. Like no, he, he is the best champion of all time in sense sure. of defenses and all of that. But he just doesn't get the. And I, I, yeah, and I also enjoy his style, man. Like he's actually like technically sound in certain things he does. You know, whereas nine tenths of the heavyweights, besides like, yeah, they besides like Dos Anjos and them. Yeah, they brawl, man. Like. He throws like combinations. Cool. So we both agree. The Predator. For sure. Viva Africa. Yeah. Wakanda for you. <laughs> okay, moving on. Co-main event. Uh, I, I can't actually say I'm more excited for this than the main event because it's just equal. Yeah. Um, we've got the Triple C, Henry, the King of C- Cringe, Kido. C- Suido. Sejudo. The man with the, the smoothest hair in, in fighting. Oh, fuck, he looks like Spongebob. <laughs> Versus the goat of the Bantamweight division. Dominic, man. the voice of the Oxidon. Dominic Cruz. Cruz be my favorite fighter forever, man. Him and BJ Penn. Um, but flip. Suido props, man. That guy can fight. And every time he fights, he proves me wrong. You know, like when he, his last fight versus Moraes, like... He was the aggressor. He outstruck the outstruck the striker, and uh, and he came back from being like owned in the first round to finishing. You know, his gas tanks ten out of ten. Cruz has got a good gas tank. One of my biggest thoughts about the fight is um, does Cejudo draw Cruz into a brawl like Cody did, and is Cejudo going to be stronger? than Cruz. That's the only two things I can think of. Um, like they've got some really interesting stats I was telling Cam this morning. Uh, when they hit the mat, Cruz is on top 96%, 94-96% of the time, and Suido is on top 99% of the time. Their, their takedown percentages are both way above the division's average. Yo. Their takedown defense is both way above the the um division's average I, i'm never the striking accuracy is both way above this, the division's average when someone gets in on cruiser's leg eh, I, i'm not worried that they're going to take him down and if it does happen it's almost like a stumble and he's back up on his feet yeah. like if you watch him versus delishaw he took delishaw down like beautifully like shooting under and i think so is actually going to come in as the aggressor he's going to come try to knock Cruz out same as he did with uh delishaw and that's where Cruz actually thrives. But if you're making Cruz be the aggressor, then it's a long night for Cruz. Uh, has Cruz ever been finished? Yeah, you're right. Faber guillotined him back in the way back when. Okay, that's, that's WC days. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's an interesting thing, is where Kido has been TKO'd by Mighty Mouse. Mouse. Yeah. And then he lost to someone else. Didn't he, didn't he lose to Bazooka Joe? I'm not sure, dude. Joe I- Hitsu? I don't know. I that know. was like a number one contender. It was. It was a number one contender fight. Okay. Or something. But hey, maybe he bounced back one, But yeah, I, I think that was a, a decision. He bounced Against back. Against Benavides. No. Yeah. Benavides did beat him. Yeah. yeah. So, Benavides is awesome. But, um, okay, the Benavides fight's more irrelevant in this case. Uh, just that being having been finished. They've both only been finished once. But Cruz more recently other than by his ACLs. <laughs> Um, and fascia and his feet and I think on the feet like obviously Cruz has the angles advantage and the movement advantage and the head movement advantage but he doesn't have the power like we've never really seen him he, like, he's like dropped you know like he sings like almost like kinetic energy he makes yeah, yeah. as he steps in he makes you step forward and yeah, it's he, like that he, he knocks you out with, with direction and movement and, and, angles, and when that happens that he, brute force. yeah he stuns the guys he doesn't knock them out you know like he dropped Dillashaw, Dillashaw bounced right back up. Yeah. Obviously, props to their conditioning, but, you know, if you're not hit that hard, it's like a wobble and not switched off. Yeah, so I'm, I'm excuse the gate opening and closing behind us, guys. 
people, uh, people uh, don't know we we in lockdown. <laughs> so I mean, I think we're gonna hear a new. I think Cruz is gonna win, but I think it's I gonna so. be a, a five rounder. Yeah, fuck it. If I it's a five rounder, we all know who wins, man. But if it is, I think it's gonna be a close one. I, I, like I don't. I'm not saying it's not gonna be fun. I'm just saying. It's gonna be a close fight, but dude, and what? I think Cruz wins. What a fairy tale story that would be if Cruz came back and won, dude. <laughs> yeah, then he's, then they mustn't talk shit. Then he's yeah, the goat, he's man. He's the goat. Yeah. Cool. So but that's so, all. Sorry, uh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, but Suhudo will be the goat one day. But for now, Cruz is the goat. It's about the same size as the goat. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, sorry, stabbing shots at people that I don't know I can't do anything about too. Um. So. Yeah, we we both saying Cruz. We both oh, we also a little bias in this respect, but we both go with Cruz. I think decision. I don't know if you yeah, I'd say decision. Man. Um. So there's another good bet on our perspective is that, you know, he's almost he's two point five nine underdog, so there's some good money to be made off of Cruz. Yeah. And then main event time: Tony Ferguson versus Justin Gaethje, former interim. <laughs> Lightweight champion oh, yeah, slash man. also reigning champion Tony Ferguson. Yeah, they. He's a lineal champion at least. That guy, they give him such a hard run, eh? And the uh, yeah, and the highlight Justin Gaethje. Yeah, man. I think I'm going with Ferguson. I like them both individually, but together I'm going Ferguson. He's he's crazy, man. He's, and I like that. But Gaethje's gonna be aggressive like always. He. He takes a lot of shots. I know he's been working on head movement or so they say, but with that, Ferguson's cut everyone he's fought, you know, so if you're coming in aggressive like that, he's going to cut you. And then what happens is the fight gets ended by blood stoppage. You know, that's possibility. Very likely. Um, so the, the difference, the, the stats side of what I'm looking at with them is, Ferguson is weakest in that first like two and a half, three minutes yeah. before he starts finding his distance and, and timing and his pressure. And that's when Gaethje is, I wouldn't say at his best, but that's where almost all of his finishes come from. And that's like, Ferguson has been dropped in almost every fight, especially in that the, the beginning stanza. Yeah. So. But that's when this crazy switch. Like, yeah. So, so, so that's switch. almost like his wake up call and gets him going. But <laughs> oh, man. Ooh, man, like Gaethje pulls on that pressure and it's hard like it's not yeah it's, you know, it's, like, it's like you hitting me not like me and box hitting each other you know what i mean yeah, man, that's nice to and those, those like log leg kicks that he does like that's the thing yeah man. that's also a thing i don't know maybe he doesn't finish him now but he does enough damage to the legs that ferguson got... can't move yeah i feel you dude. ferguson's got those legs you know and we don't and, really know how his knee is and uh but Gaethje kicks those cops ugly, man. And like from standstill. Wow. Yeah. Wow. He like, how many fights has he stopped with just calf kicks? I don't know, but many. Like more, yeah, way above yeah. average. It's like someone hitting you in the legs with a baseball bat. That. Yeah. They both also have super high ac- accuracy. But interesting fact, they both have below average um, defense on, st- on distance and medium striking. So they, they both have been hit by... <laughs> dropped more than pretty much everyone else in the division ever. Yeah, Jack of all <laughs> trade master of none. They're good at striking. You can't always be good at defending <laughs> as well, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they haven't been finished, but they've been dropped yeah. and hit significantly way more than pretty much everyone else in the division. Thank you, Bloody Elbow, for those alternative stats. Um, I'm going with Gaethje for the upset again. Oof. I f- I, I feel just, like Ferguson, man. Just, that guy, he's proved me wrong too many times. That's why I thought he was going to beat Khabib, in my opinion. Ooh, I swear, ooh, I think that. Bold claims. Yeah, I'll put it out there. Look, I mean, we'll find out tonight. Uh, check it out on Super Sport. But I'm just saying, Gaethje can win you a lot of money tonight, guys. He's, he's another 2.5 yeah. underdog. Tony Ferguson, 1.4 favorite. Let us know in the comments below. Like, subscribe. And let's enjoy the fights tonight, guys. It's been a, a long couple of weeks or months without any live yeah, action. Live sports, so I can't wait. And such a good card. Gaijutsu, King Cam, Cheers, peace. Guys.